Hello, and welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. This week we are descending into the jungle for a look at Bride of the Gorilla. I love a good gorilla movie, from The Unholy Three to King Kong, so I'm really looking forward to this tale of interspecies matrimony. It's just the kind of horror the Republicans warned us would happen in the wake of legalised gay marriage. But enough preamble. Like me, you're probably itching to see that gorilla. Close, but no banana. This is Perry Mason. Yes, before Ironside, before Perry Mason and before he gained about 200 pounds, Raymond Burr played our anti-hero Barney Chavez, a rubber plantation worker with a passion for the ladies. So, now Gorilla? Not so much. This is Dina, one of the objects of Barney's desire. She's played by Barbara Payton, whose autobiography was called I Am Not Ashamed, so I'm assuming she wrote it before appearing in this movie. I don't want to be reminded of it. She's famous for having slept with Bob Hope, among others. It's part of the job. Including celebrated Western yeah, actor yeah. Woody Strode, yeah, for whom she secured a role in this film. No, I don't want it. I don't believe in black magic. Woody Strode there, demonstrating how he got the name Woody. But the real star name here is Lon Chaney, playing the local police chief. Over there. Actually, it's Lon Chaney Jr. His father was the great silent film actor, fondly known as the man of a thousand faces. He died in 1930, and about 10 seconds later, his son hijacked his name and reputation to jumpstart his own acting career as the man of a thousand failures. And your private opinion? Actually, that's a little unfair. Junior's real name was Creighton Tull Chanian. Anyone christened Creighton Tull has the right to change their name to whatever the hell they want. And his career was not undistinguished. In 1941, he played the Wolfman in the Universal Classic. In 1951, however... Exactly. Safe to say that by then, his best days were behind him. With the bridal party in place, let's get into the story. Maybe it's his compassion. There was an accident, Barney. A man got hurt. They always get hurt. That's the chance they take. But the ladies can't help falling for the brooding Barney. Every time I meet an attractive man, he's either married or just going to be married. Better luck next time. On the one hand, he's slumming it with servant girl Is Lorena. Why did you say it? Because you wanted to hear it. On the other, he set his sights on the graceful Dina. The blonde trophy wife of his boss. I don't understand a word. Ultimately, he decides to go with the money. What's the matter with you? And punches his boss into the path of a moving snake. Get up, you idiot! Watch out for that snake! In the other movie. Or oh, just lie there and get bit. Well, I assume he was bitten. I saw it. Doting mother and local witch, Ah Long, now plants a tree on the dead man's face in order to curse Barney for spurning her daughter. Curse shall be Barney Chavez. Rather than dobbing him into the local police chief. He was bit by the snake. He was? Who is apparently finding it hard to believe that someone could die of a snake bite in the jungle. But the evidence I have is not strong enough to bring charges against you. Although he is right to be suspicious as A, that's not a poisonous snake, Barney. and B, Barney waits all of five minutes before marrying the old man's widow. Clearly the curse isn't quite cutting it, as Arlong also spikes his drink for good measure. What a master. She has these glasses hidden all over the house just in case someone cheats yeah, on her daughter. May I drink to your neighbour? This has the desired effect. He looks to me like a man who's been poisoned. That would be dead. But he is showing some strange symptoms, like tinnitus. You hear that? No. You hear that high sound? No. It's a bird with long red feathers. Also, hearing in colour. It flies without making a noise. No wonder I can't hear it. He's also repeating things. Why shouldn't I tell you? 
Why shouldn't I? He's also repeating things. The animals talk to me and I understand them. I understand them. And developing a Napoleon complex. Finally, he's tempted out into the night and returns with wild tales of his adventures. Out there, in the jungle. Out there, everything's different. I seem changed. My hands, my eyes. Sounds great. Wish I'd been there. Or perhaps if there'd been a camera nearby, someone could have filmed it. I can climb as if I had wings. What? I can climb as if I had wings. If you have wings, you don't need to climb. When's the last time you saw a bird climbing a tree? That's what idiot birds do. All this is director Kurt Siobmak building the suspense because I think we all know what these symptoms mean. We already have a bride, so what's Barney turning into? Have you heard of this uh, big cat that's supposed to be around? <laughs> of course. Some say it's a puma, others a giant ape. Yes, that well-known big cat, the giant ape. Actually, this is interesting because pumas and gorillas live on different continents. I've watched this film more times than anyone and I still have no idea where it's set. Baboon? Africa. Jaguar? South America. Then there's the natives. I'd say Mexican farmers in search of the Magnificent Seven. Indian houseboys? Well, she just looks like Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. And as for her mother, not a clue. But I'm guessing she spent most of her career telling Peter Cushing to stay away from the castle. It's almost as if the filmmakers decided that anyone with a skin tone just north of Burnt Sienna would pass for a native. You know, Doctor, I was born in this little town. Oh, we're in a town now, are we? And you're a native of it. I sometimes feel as though I don't even speak my own people's language. That's because you don't. But let's be sure. Here's Lon, I'm native as you are, Cheney, talking to some of his people. See if you can spot the subtle difference in their accents. Did you see this animal? Yes, I have seen the animal. Spurred on by the local doctor, Cheney investigates further, building up a crystal clear picture of what is being withheld for the ape-tastic climax. It was huge and red. Red? Yes. It has a head like a man and teeth like an alligator. It walks in his hind legs. Like a man? No, like a beast that walks like a man. That's entirely lucid and helpful description, notwithstanding, I personally can't wait to see this red gorilla that climbs like a bird, looks like a cat, but walks like a beast that walks like a man. And clearly neither can Dina since she runs off into the jungle to find it, closely followed by the Chuckle Brothers packing heat. It's time. Let's see that gorilla. There it! Oh. Okay, well, you're gardening. We're running out of time. The film's almost over. Based on that reaction, it must be fucking awesome. It's in there. Wait, I haven't seen it. Son of a... Do we at least get to see it dead? Oh, come on! That's it? Are you kidding me? I sat through 56 minutes to see an upside down reflection of an already dead gorilla? Plus, when did he put his clothes back on? And I don't know if you noticed, but by blindly opening fire into a tree, Junior and friend managed to kill Dina as well. What did she do to deserve death? I'd love to hear Inspector Cheney trying to explain this one back at the office. Let me tell you how the jungle itself took the law into its own hands. The jungle has risen to punish Barney Chavez for his crime. No, it didn't! He may have been cursed by a Romany gypsy, but you shot him! And where was my gorilla wedding? None of it adds up! Ah, ah. Bang. That's it! That's the whole film!